Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas More. We're pleased that you have joined us. We have these announcements. The Knights of Columbus spaghetti dinner planned for January 15th has been postponed due to the rise of COVID cases in our area. Please use extra caution on our sidewalks and in the parking lot as ice becomes impossible to completely clear with these colder temperatures. Please know that when weather prevents you from traveling to church for mass, you have a dispensation from the obligation to attend. Please always put your safety first. Now please stand and with a wave or a bow, greet those around you as we prepare for our mass. Thanks for coming out on a frosty morning. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We celebrate today the epiphany, the manifestation of God to all people. As we enter into this Mass, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of God the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, yeah. 
let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you, The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels will fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah and from Sheba shall come bringing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit. Namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judah, for this, thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come forth a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and he ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. The Feast of the Epiphany is a wonderful celebration. In many parts of the world it's celebrated as the actual Christmas Day, the day of of gift giving and and so many gifts we really have in this wonderful story I uh, think there are many lessons I'll just talk about three you uh, already made a tough journey to get here on a cold day but three lessons first I, I think the Feast of the Epiphany teaches us about Christ being born not just for a select group of people but born for every person in every nation of every religion and race. Matthew's gospel especially was written for Jewish Christians who in the early church really struggled to learn how to find equality with Gentile Christians. So 
The story of the Gentile Magi coming to worship the child Jesus teaches us to overcome all differences, or teaches us to be free from bigotry and prejudice and, and racism. It shows us that's really foreign to the message of Christ and why he was born to the world. The three Magi, often represented in art by the different races, often you'll see in creches, a, a European and Asian and African of the, of the Magi, the three wise men. It makes that point all the more. Christ is born for all people of the world. Secondly, it teaches us a great deal about faith. We all arrive at faith differently. You know, uh, sometimes people accept faith with, with great difficulty. And other times it's very simple. You know, I, I learned about Jesus as a child, and I'm very grateful for my parents, to my parents for teaching me that faith and my local parish community for passing that faith on. I, I grew in my faith on my own in college, I guess, but... You know, I don't really remember a time where I doubted belief in Jesus and God the Father. I don't remember ever not believing. On the other hand, I, I, I've met a lot of people who struggle and search and, and have a difficult time coming to a genuine faith. And, you know, I, I, in a sense, I, I heard someone once describe it as the difference between how the shepherds came to faith and, and, and how the magi do. The shepherds were told, baby is born in Bethlehem. You know, they instantly believe, and they go there, and they see. Everything is, is kind of given to them, and they accept it. The wise men, on the other hand, these magi, they make this difficult journey. They struggle. They read the stars. They, they have to ask for directions. You know, it's, it's a much more difficult, long, and, and, and difficult process. But one of the things that they can teach us is this. Don't let... The difficulty of the search discourage you. Keep at it as they did. And know this, if you have a desire in your heart to search for God, chances are God's already found you. He's the one that put that desire there. So in reality, he's not very far. Continue that search. Finally, I think it teaches us a lesson about community. You know, in our religious imagination, we uh, say there were three wise men or magi. But really, I, there's no mention in the gospel of how many there were. We're just told that they brought three gifts, and, and, and that makes us believe that there were three of them. But I, I can't help but wonder if it wasn't a whole caravan of travelers, men and women, supporting each other on the journey. And isn't that how we journey today? We journey with the, the caravan of our church. You know, we come together to support one another. When life has its darkness for one member, other members can help them see the stars. When one is strong in faith, their prayer can help those whose faith is weak. And when one is joyful, I think that joy is multiplied in community. As a community, a great caravan journeying to, to God's glory, we also learn to respect that everybody's journey is different. And even if people differ in their journey from ours, they're still an important part of our community. The truth is uh, uh, something we recognize, the goodness, the power, the ultimate majesty of God is much bigger than any of us can ever claim to have as our own. So like the Magi, we do homage today to that eternal one, the one who comes in the form of a child, lives as a human being in our midst, and the one who we follow, the light of the world. Today, as we celebrate this great epiphany, Jesus born for all people of the world, May we come to discover many epiphanies in our lives, many moments that keep us on the journey to one day we together find ourselves fully in the presence of the one who fulfills all of our hopes and all of our dreams, Christ Jesus, who is our Lord.
Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Church, I cast one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord is light to all the nations. We bring him our petitions and our prayers for the church and the whole world. For the church, through our words and deeds, we may be a light to those who are searching for direction and a sign of hope for those seeking to begin again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing on the new year, that God will fill the coming days with health of body, mind, and spirit. Renew the gifts of the spirit within us and inspire us with new ways to share the good news with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper faith that like the wise men, God's light may guide us through the unknown of the coming days as we rely more deeply on God's love and care for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater unity and cooperation within the human family, that God will heal the wounds of hatred, open hearts to the tenets of every person, to the talents of every person, and help us work together against violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God restore the sick and protect the human family from the COVID virus and give strength to all healthcare workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that the light of God's love may lead them into the joy of God's presence forever we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for the prayers in our book of intentions and for all the prayers we pause to mention in silence we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer lord god as we search for a deeper faith in you Open our eyes to your presence where we least expect to find it. Help us to find it in every person and in every aspect of human life. Shepherd and guide us to you, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which we now offer not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly, it is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, he made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. So with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we need this For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, with all the clergy, with all your people. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sinfulness, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's share a sign of peace with each other. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Only say the word of my soul.
cast aside all your fear and dread. Come follow the light to Bethlehem. The way of salvation revealed to all. Christ our light has come. Christ our light has come. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. As you leave church today in the entranceways and by the calendars, there are uh, pieces of chalk and a little prayer for a house blessing. This is a wonderful tradition on Epiphany, of Epiphany house blessing, and uh, parish member Paul Bobay keeps it alive. He's prepared all of these, so if you'd like to bless your house, place a little chalk mark. It gives you the instructions to do that, a blessing for 2020, 2022. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God come upon you and remain with you forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace, glorifying God by our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.